they're off. And the bar one racing.com, Hatton's Grace Hurdle, grade one over two and a half miles. And it's Stormy Ireland, the first to show in front from Honey Suckle, the reappearing unbeaten champion hurdler. Saldir alongside, and they're followed by Ronald Pump and Abacadabra. These are tracked by the Grand National Fourth latest exhibition. Durasso last but one, and the back marker is Sky Ace. Making their way to the second flight on the run into the straight first time. And Stormy Ireland, who likes to make the running, has built up a sizable advantage. Made a mistake there at that second flight. Had to reach for it, but opposed a clear advantage over Ronald Pump, who's moved off in pursuit. And then Honeysuckle, Saldir, then Abacadabra, latest exhibition, Durasso and Sky Ace. Stormy Ireland has strung out the field, turning into flights three and four. Ronald Pump, last year's home like an express train second, is followed by Honey Suckle and then Saldir and Abacadabra. Latest exhibition has two behind Sky Ace and Durasso. On to flight number four, taking them up to the stands with the circuit to go. And it's Stormy Ireland and Danny Mullins, well clear of Ronald Pump and Keith Donahue who's a good few lengths in front of the third running Honeysuckle and Rachel Blackmore, fourth the Sal Deer and Patrick Mullins and then Abacadabra and Davy Russell, latest exhibition Brian Cooper. On the inside is Sky Ace and Jody McGarvey and the back marker is Durasso and Mark Walsh having made the switch. Heading away to the first of two flights past the stands, they've seven more left to jump and it's Stormy Ireland continuing to increase her advantage over Ronald Pump. Closer in third is Honey Suckle, winner for the last two years, bidding to join other great mares. The Stormy Ireland is away from the first of two upper flights. Maintaining a clear advantage over Ronald Pump and Honey Suckle and then Sal Deer and Abacadabra, latest exhibition Sky Ace and Durasso. Going to the hurdle, taking them towards the halfway stage. And it is Stormy Ireland out in front of Ronald Pump and Honey Suckled and Sal Deer and Abacadabra with the final three latest exhibition, Durasso and Sky Ace. They continue well spaced out, turning at the halfway stage. Five flights left to jump, little or no changes in the order of running. It's Stormy Ireland who jumped off to make the running, which she normally does. Ronald Pump and Honey Suckle. Closer in second and third, and then Sal Deer and Abacadabra, latest exhibition, Durasso and Sky Ace. Five flights left to jump as they approach the final mile. And it's Stormy Ireland with a greatly reduced advantage over Honeysuckle and Ronald Pump. Then Sal Deer, who's been scrappy enough for a flight or two. And then Abacadabra, latest exhibition, Durasso and Sky Ace. Passing their point of departure, seven furlongs to go. Four flights to jump, Stormy Ireland is reeled in by Honeysuckle and Ronald Pump. Well cleared of Sal Deer and then Abacadabra latest exhibition, Durasso and Sky Ace. Four flights to jump and it's Stormy Ireland, tracked by last year's first and second Honeysuckle and Ronald Pump who go up on either side. They're out in front of Sal Deer, Abacadabra, latest exhibition ridden along and then Durasso and Sky Ace. Five and a half furlongs to go, they've three flights to jump. And it's Stormy Ireland with a companion on either side, Honeysuckle and Ronald Pump. At the third last flight, in the air together, Honeysuckle and Ronald Pump, who's now pushed and shoved along on the inside. Stormy Ireland has dropped off them in the third. And then Sal Deer and Abacadabra, latest exhibition, Durasso and Sky Ace, racing round the home turn with two flights to jump. And it's Honeysuckle who's picked it up. It's Honeysuckle coming down towards the second last with a growing advantage over Ronald Pump. And then Sal Deer and Abacadabra staying on but it's only for place money. Honeysuckle with a commanding lead coming to the final flight in the bar one racing.com Hatton's Grace Hurdle. It's Honeysuckle and Rachel Blackmore on the unbeaten champion hurdlers safely over. They took their time. Ronald Pump is in second and then Abacadabra. Honeysuckle and Rachel Blackmore. They're a remarkable combination. Season in, season out. Three Hatton's Grace Hurdles. Second is Ronald Pump, Abacadabra in third, and Durasso in fourth.
Well, we just had a fantastic roar reception here for the wonderful Honeysuckle, who's won her third bar one racing.com, Hatton's Grace Hurdle. Trainer Henry de Bromad with us now. Henry, just thanks, buddy. tell us about the elation. I'm sure no small measure of relief you're feeling. Blow out the cheeks there after that. Yeah, absolutely. Plenty of relief, you know, just um, she's an incredible mare and Rachel's brilliant on her and just, yeah, relieved and delighted. Coming here today, what was your feeling? I know you'd gone on record as saying she had to be fitter this time, and that would have found her out, I think, had she not have been the way the race was run, wouldn't it? Yeah, we definitely made a, a, an effort to, to make her a bit fitter, um, to have her a bit straighter than last year. Um, so I haven't really speaking, spoken to Rachel about it, but, but uh, I didn't hear any uh, reports on a, on a blow or anything. But, uh, yeah, look, she, yeah, we definitely did that. And uh, my feeling coming was uh, she'll surely get beaten this time. <laughs> <laughs> the pessimist that you are. I yeah. know you were in Newbury yesterday, but quite a few of your runners here were withdrawn. Was there ever a doubt in your mind about allowing her to run? Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday uh, afternoon there was, definitely. And... Um, uh, but you know what, Rachel's once she saw the ground today, she was happy. It was safe. We had a look at it. We I was happy enough, and um, yeah, everyone was happy to go. And in the race itself, it was truly run as we know. Did you see everything you wanted to see from her? The way she travelled, the way she jumped, and as per usual, put it to bed. Yeah, she was brilliant. I thought. I thought her jumping might have been, could have been a little bit sharper, but first run back, you know, possibly. Um, but uh, you know, that would be being ultra critical. They were going a real good lick, I thought, on pretty good ground, you know. So, so. Um, but out the, out in the country, she jumped really well. Maybe the, the second and the second last or something. We've got a huge crowd here today, which is brilliant to see, and she's got an enormous following this mare. Does that kind of add to the pressure you feel when she's out there doing her thing? Yeah, definitely. Like, it, it was amazing to see her coming into the roar, and even when she came into the ring before the race, it just went silent, you know? It was, you could hear a pin drop, and uh, the roar she got afterwards was incredible, and brilliant to have Kenny Alexander and his family and friends here as well. You know, they haven't been to many of her races, so... It's just a great day and, and uh, you know, I feel very lucky to be involved, really, to be honest. Like, she's an incredible mare and, and uh, yeah, like I say, feel very lucky to be involved. And still only a seven-year-old, Henry. She's yeah. achieved so much. I, yeah. mean, I know you said it yourself. It feels like she's been around for so long. Could she actually be coming into her prime now, potentially? It's a fair comment, you know. Like, um, yeah, she could easily. Yeah, you know, she's she's really filled out. She was a bit heavier. <laughs> coming here today that I was sweating on that as well but um, so um, yeah we'd normally run her off about 470 but she was 480 coming today so um, uh, she, you know maybe she's just I was hoping she'd just filled out her frame more yeah I presume the race has almost picked themselves from here is it going to be the same route as last year I think so yeah. I think it's worked well for us you know I can't see any reason to change but we haven't firmed up on anything and welcome back to Ferry House. One race still to come, but of course the highlight was the victory today of Honey Suckler, third in the bar one racing.com Hatton's Grace Hurdle under Rachel Blackmore is with us now. Rachel, congratulations first of all. I mean, it was amazing for us to watch. Just tell us how much of a buzz that was for you today. Yeah, look, it was incredible. Um, do you know, th there's such a crowd of people here today and it's, it's great that everyone's here. Kenny Alexander is here with all his family and, you know, it's so special to have people here, um, you know, I get so much enjoyment out of her, but I feel like people got to see her today and enjoy her as well. That's it. The anticipation, the expectation, I suppose it's all part and parcel of Honeysuckle now. Had she been pleasing you at home going into the race today to give you lots of confidence? Yeah, she had. Um, look, I, I don't ride her much. I think I've, I have I, I gave her a jump maybe twice. Um, Coleman Comfort rides her out uh, every day and he was very happy with her. Um, you know, Henry definitely done done a bit more with her um, than he had done this time last year. So yeah, everyone was happy with her. Rachel, if you don't mind, just talk us through the race because right from the word go, Stormy Ireland seemed to set a really good pace, and it was only you and Ronald Pump, the eventual runner-up, who ever really were in close proximity. It seemed. Yeah, look, we went we went a right good gallop, um, and yeah, we we closed the gap a little bit down the down the back on Stormy. Um, you know. In hindsight, I, I had her committed good and early, but uh, yeah, look, it was just, it, it was a messy race in that sense, that, you know, the pace of the race, uh, you know, we went to go gallop, we slowed up, we were all on top of Stormy then, and, uh, but look, it worked out. I know there was a little bit of trepidation about the ground, Henry had pulled out a few horses here yesterday, but you apparently gave him the confidence after having a look at it earlier on that it would be fine. Did you feel she... She handled it all the way around beautifully. Yeah, she did. Look, she's she's extremely versatile on all types of ground. You know, once it once it was safe, 
you know, I, I was going to be happy with it. Um, it's very easy to say that now. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, look, she, she won here um, before when it was proper good, good, good ground. So, uh, look, uh, you know, she's very versatile. And Rachel, that reception you got, we all know when you came up the hill at Cheltenham, it was to virtual silence. And but sadly, that's been one of the themes of the last 18 months. It's a massive crowd here today, and they really, really did cheer in. What was that like for you on board? Oh, look, it was it was fantastic. Um, you know, great to have such a buzz here. And as I said, her connections are all here as well. So look, it's just a fantastic day. And uh, yeah, it's it's great that she you know kept doing what she does best. Last season, I mean, this was the perfect launch pad for what proved to be a, a triumphant campaign. Are you hoping? I presume that it just goes along similar lines from here. Yeah, um, you know, I presume that's the path they'll take. Um, so. Yeah, look, she's just, uh, you know, you take it every day as it comes, but yeah, she's just, she's incredible.